Hello, good day. I'm John Michael P. Apple and I'm currently taking app MA Sociology. For today, we're going to tackle about descriptive statistics and presentation analysis. Under definition of terms, we're going to define presentation analysis, which is the data presentation and analysis chapter that presents and analyzes data collected from a research. Some of the major issues discussed in this section include response rate, the demographic profile of the respondents, and the main research findings, which are discussed as per objective. And on the other hand, descriptive statistic, this is a summary statistic that quantitatively describes or summarizes feature from the collection of information, while descriptive statistic is the process of using and analyzing those statistics. Based on the activity that was given last Saturday, I personally chose this thesis which is being presented by Randy Joseph Barrios and submitted in the Graduate School of the University of Massachusetts Amherst. This thesis is entitled, Boys Just Want to Have Fun, A Sexual Behaviors and Romantic Intentions of Gay and Straight Men in College Hookup Culture. This is for the fulfillment of his Master of Arts under the Department of Sociology. So usually, scholars that study college students involved in sexual culture in the United States are largely frame men as being detached from emotions and, and concerns with relationship and also in the pursuit of sexual conquest. Through an examination of college sexual culture, an environment often associated with meaningless sexual encounters, this paper or this thesis is having a data gathering in terms of stereotypes in both gay and straight men by analyzing sexual behaviors, social opportunity structures, and romantic attitudes of gay and straight males in college. The paper also finds evidence that both supports and contradicts existing literature on masculine stereotypes for both gay and men. On the list of tables that's being provided on this paper, we have First, we have its age, race, and the national status characteristics. Second, we have the family and its regional background characteristics. Third, year in school, residence, the GPA, athlete status, and institutional affiliation. And the last one is the political orientation, a self-related attractiveness, and religious attendance. We also note that based on the thesis provided, gay men that is only represented 5% of men in the survey data. It is notable that the sample's representation of gay men is slightly higher than a few existing national estimates of gay population based in U.S. However, given the social acceptance of the sexual diversity is more widespread in younger generations and on college campuses, this is totally not surprising. Okay, under Chapter 3, the data and methods, the data that been collected via an online survey called the College Social Life Study that originated in 2005 at Stanford University and has been distributed across 20 additional U.S. universities and colleges. This has been collected between 2005 and 2009 for a total sample size of 17,900 respondents. The sample size is restricted to undergraduate men who self-identified as either heterosexual or gay for a sample size of 5,106 and 274 respondents, respectively. Although the data are not necessarily nationally represented of gay college men in the U.S., probability sampling methods were not employed in the construction of these datasets. The advantage of having a larger gay male college age population than other studies allows you more robust estimates. The data provided readily available detailed information about sexual interactions both in relationship as well as more casual contexts such as dating in hookups. Respondents were also recruited through classes through campus list servers to answer fix. Response, response questions about their background, belief, and other social and sexual experiences is one of the largest U.S. datasets to provide a perspective on the culture college hookup culture. In Table 1 and 2, a picture emerges showing 
a more ethnically diverse group of gay respondents with a slightly high, higher percentage born outside the United States. The majority of the straight men, which consists of 68%, who answer the survey are white, and by contrast, almost twice as many gay men as straight men are Latinos, and 4% are on the Asian side. The higher number of non-whites among gay men is also supported in the National Representative Ad Health data. Gay men in the sample are more likely to be immigrants than straight men, whereas or overall, both groups are about the same age, which is 20 years old, although gay men are a few months older on the average. On the table 2, we have its family background characteristics. It shows that gay men in the datasets have a less educated parents with a twice as many with mothers who did not graduate from high school. This difference has been supported elsewhere in national representative data comparing gay rights and gay and straight adolescents. The dynamic in this interesting given that the educational attainment and household income estimates for gay adult men themselves tend to be higher on average than for straight men. Gay men in the sample are also less likely than straight men to have parents who are still partnered or married. There are few differences between the gay and straight men as the types of towns and regions where they grew up with the exceptional and slightly more gay respondents are coming from the Southwest. Table 3 indicates that even though both groups of men are having are about the same age, they are also distributed through different life stages of the college experience. More straight men are in their first year than the gay men, while more gay men are in their third year of colleges. It may be that more gay men than straight men go directly on from high school to college, it is also likely that gay men feel more comfortable coming out later in college than in their initial years, and so they are more likely to identify as gay when they are further along in high school. Indeed, another study comparing gay men to straight men in college are also find higher proportions of gay among upper class men. About an equal number of both groups live on the campus in dorms, which in con contrast, the results of previous study finding that there are more gay men live off campus than the straight men. More straight men live in the fraternity houses, while more gay men are living in other forms of campus housing. Three times as many straight men as gay men are athletes and 18% fewer straight men report a GPA above 3.5 cumulative grade power average. In Table 3, it also additionally lists the many colleges and universities at which these surveys were conducted. Of the 20 schools, 40% are located in the West, 30% are located in the Northeast, and a remaining 20% are located in Midwest. There are only one Southeast Eastern school and one school located in the Southwest in the dataset. These schools represented a wide spectrum of selective private liberal arts schools, large uni universities, and an Ivy League institution. At this school, gay men who failed out the survey are overrepresented at Stanford, Harvard, Ithaca, the University of California, and Merced, and the University of Washington as well. Gay men are underrepresented at Foothill and the University of Massachusetts Amherst and at Stony Brook. On table number four, we have its political orientation, self-rated attractiveness, and religious attendance. There are also notable differences in political orientation provided on the table and self-rated attractiveness and also its religious attendance between a gay and a straight undergraduate men in the sample. Presented in table number four, in terms of political orientation, most gay men report themselves to be very liberal, while most straight men report themselves to be middle of the road. And on the smallest percentage, we have the both group self-reporting as very conservative. When asked to rate themselves in terms of physical attractiveness, on the scale from 1 to 10, 
with 1 being the lowest attractiveness and 10 being the highest, gay men rate their physical attractiveness lower than the straight men. This may indicate that the difference in modesty, self-esteem, heightened standards of attractiveness for gay populations or a combination of the three, gay men also appear to be slightly less religious than the straight men with about a 7% more gay men reporting that they had not attended any religious service for over the past year. This finding has been supported by post-national representative research which documents declining religiosity among gay men in the transition from adolescence to adulthood. On the chapter 4, which is considered as the analysis of the tables and data gathered earlier, it's entitled Stereotypical Sexual Expectations. Within the heteronormative sexuality, men occupy a place of privilege although the position is not as monolithic as originally thought. Nevertheless, heterosexual men who are sexually active rarely bear the label of slut and are oftentimes admired for their sexual prowess. Conversely, males who decide to maintain a monogamous relationship are fulfilling the heteronormative expectations of their friends and family. This does not differ in the college hookup script, whereas heterosexual men who look up on college campus are stereotyped as wanting to sow with their wild oats before settling down a relationship. They are expected to participate in hookup more than the relationship drink heavily, experience more sexual gratification than their partners, and if they so desire, pursue relationship on their own terms. In the hookup culture, men that are freely to choose whether to have a very active sex life or to settle down and maintain an exclusive relationship. In other words, heterosexual men can freely pursue hookup in relationship without the fear of lasting social stigma. So based on the analysis, stereotype for gay males, on the other hand, frame them as more promiscuous and less relationship-oriented than their heterosexual peers, engaging in sexual exploits, the warrant and attention of scholars out the risk paradigm respective. The assumption of the male's sex drive, however, culturally constructed, it is so ingrained in Western culture that it has become a cliché, frequently used to perpetuate the myth of gay male promiscuity. This depiction plays an emphasis on the quest for anonymous, unattached sex with a competence lack of romantic intentions. Gay male usually in this view are the pursuit of hyper-masculine, prestige sex, and seek to bolster their reputation by having frequent sex with attractive hook-up partners. Although the study has started to explore a portion of the LGBTQ hookup script, there is still more work to be done. So this calls upon the scholars engaged in the collection and analysis of the data and expands their examination of romantic and sexual behaviors to college students to the population outside of the straight, white, middle class males and females. Indeed, the study is also a limited in the way due to a small sample size and limitation to the college social life study. It was not possible to include bisexuals, transgendered, and a queer student in this paper. Examining the comparison between gay and straight males, however, though not necessarily representative of the larger U.S. population, it is an important step towards better understanding that gay sexually among young adults is in college. It is also essential that the future scholarship remains vigilant in attempts to include sexual minority youth in larger literature around sexuality, as sexuality is not something that exists only for adults, nor it is something that only adults can understand without the inclusion of the LGBT youth in sexuality studies, scholarly understanding of sexual is considered as incomplete. Thank you and... God bless.